Have you ever sat around talking with your car buddy about a build and road trip that would be awesome, but because it's a terrible financial choice and you know it would be a disaster, you never actually do it? Well, this is one of those builds. Instead of just a normal build series, I wanted to give myself a real challenge. I wanted to buy a stock 37 year old VW, pick it up, drive it 500 miles, swap the engine in two and a half days, then drive it home 630 miles. With only four days to get the swap done and drive home, I knew we had a tough task ahead of us. On our last episode, we picked up our no longer running Scirocco in Atlanta, drove it 500 miles to Florida, ripped the old engine out, and prepped for its new powertrain. In this episode, we get our new engine dropped in, run into old car issues, and find some bad news that could kill our build. All right, so day two, we're getting here to the shop. Today is the day that I think really determines how likely we are to actually finish <laughs> this thing in time. Yeah, if today goes bad, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. And I know that sounds redundant, but it's heavy, heavy on my mind. Yeah, let's go. Oh yeah, I'm good. So we shipped this engine down. Uh, after Charles and I built this engine and got everything together, our guys in our warehouse actually wrapped this up, as you can see, quite beautifully. And we have all of our parts, maybe, uh, <laughs> that, we, that we think we need for everything here in this thing. So we should be able to cut this thing open and get it laid out so we can get organized. Yeah, can you put a freshie on there yeah. for us? Oh, uh, yeah, brand new. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we got ECU <laughs> wiring. We got engine mounts. Man, whoever labeled this, phenomenal job. And then I think we'll actually just roll it over there and then we'll start unboxing the rest of the stuff, get that stuff straight and organized, and uh, yeah, game time. Since these control arms look absolutely terrible, we decided to replace them. So Jamie actually got some uh, locally for us uh, on our way down because when we were at Eurofed, we were like, hey, these things look like garbage and they're all rusted. So let's get some new ones. 40 years of disgustingness is, has rust and debris everywhere. This car was cleaned last night. Uh, pressure washed. Char Char yeah, that's Charles. That's Char 40 years of disgustingness, AKA uh, Charles, the home mechanic. Did we get a nice new sway bar for this we thing? We did not get a new sway bar. We probably, well, if I was gonna get one, the good news is these are not hard to replace, but it, oh, this thing has upgraded bushings already. They're like kind of a, a reddish color. I'm not positive, but because I'm no Mark One expert, I presume these are probably poly bushings in here or some kind of upgraded bushing because usually factory bushings are just gonna be like black and these have like a clearish red color to them. Oh, yeah. Almost hurt myself, but I didn't. <clears throat> And this guy. Yeah, the, the boots on this, as Charles mentioned when we were there, are pretty rough. And the joints, I guess the joint actually is, moves pretty freely, but these boots are completely smoked, which means the axle was probably not very good either. I don't know if Scirocco calipers came red, but I assume they probably painted them. Based on the back, back oh yeah, they did the old spray the outside look. So. The, if you look back here, there's no no red, and if you look over here, there is red. So someone probably just, oh yeah, the springs are painted red too here. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's for sure an aftermarket deal. Uh, someone came after and painted. These brakes are gonna go away eventually anyway, but for the time being, we gotta deal with them. To get all this working, we have to flash the ECM. We have a battery plugged up to this system. We have everything toggled on because the guys at TDC shop put together a harness for us that will allow us to do so without anything being set up in a car yet. So we have it hooked up to a battery. We're first gonna immobilize or defeat this. Unitronic software allows us to actually immobilize or defeat this because obviously we're a dealer. Uh, and then we're gonna put our Unitronic flash on there for our swap setup. Oh yeah, I cut my arm a little bit with the wire wheel. No big deal. So this bushing goes up in the mount inside the body of the car. You can see we added it on, on the transmission side. I think we're gonna actually replace this bolt right here so they are consistent and bolt goes through bolts transmission to the car. Charles is climbing inside the engine bay because we're gonna test fit this front brace before we paint it. And, ah, luckily the axles aren't um, in there anymore for him to get cut uh, all over his back like I did. 
things that are all gross oh. anyway. What are those? Oh yeah. So these they're are like air. They're like air uh, airflow deflectors. Yes. They're rotted anyway. So unfortunately. Sorry, Charlie. Yep. Just so you're aware, we're no by no means experts on swaps, uh, but we are under the impression, or actually we know that Shirakos are different. The Eurowise kit we're using, it was intended for Mark I models. Because of that, there is some fitment issues and we ended up not using this. If we were to use it, it would have to be modified so it could reach both bolts on this car and get around this pinch weld. We end up using the Eurowise front mount with the factory mounting location on the front of the car. Ah! Now, before we got started, it's always best to lay out all your parts so we can get organized and know where everything is. Our radiator, our fan assemblies, our shifter box and axles, lower control arms that we decided to replace, the ECM and the wiring harness, as well as the new accelerator pedal and the mounting bracket for the accelerator pedal. We also have our SolarWorks coilovers and the bushings to replace when installing them. We have our engine and transmission, which we previously built, which will be in a later video, that already has the Eurowise swap kit mounted onto it, as well as all the other parts. Okay, so important part of this is we have to cut the bracket off of this, uh, this steering rack for the shifter linkages. So I am gonna be trying to cut it here and here and almost make like a box around it. You could take the steering rack out to make it a little bit easier and cleaner to do, uh, but we don't have the time. After cutting a good portion of the steering rack bracket away and getting it out of the way, I found out that we had a fuel leak. That is a good time to stop cutting and shooting sparks everywhere. Well, I had to discontinue it and we had to leave it in a non-ideal cut fashion, but enough for us to get the job done. Okay, so we have a fuel leak coming from right here on these lines. We cut them actually higher up because they ran to the driver's side of the engine bay. If you take a look there, we cut them there and then now it's leaking like way down here somewhere. Uh, this is probably because something shifted along the way as we've been moving the car up and down and uh, the lines have cracked from all this rust and everything else. This is typical rusty car stuff you're going to have on old cars. You're going to have debris, rust, all that stuff happen on these lines. The right way to do this would be to replace the lines front to back. Uh, we don't have time for that. So Nobody got time for that. So we're going to try to fix this the best we can. Uh, right now we're going to try to stop from leaking. That's the goal right now, so we don't have fuel all over us. Hey, Charles. Hey, girl. Hey. No. I don't like this tone, by the way. It's now leaking further back. Yeah, it's bad. Well, eventually we're, we're gonna just have no more gas in the car, and we'll just drain it all, and then we'll, our leak will be solved. There it is. Oh, there it is. We've located, we've sprung it. <laughs> that, that's a, it's a gusher. There's our leak. Where's the leak, ma'am? Do we want to try and cut it like here or try and cut it right at that break? But I can try and cut it there and just reclamp it. Yeah, right. let's do that. <laughs> so. Hashtag old car problems. As we continue with uh, driving the car, even once we get this addressed, assuming it does actually work, we're gonna crack a fuel line later on down the road and we'll be stuck on the side of the road with broken fuel lines. Literally. Down the road. Okay, so I got our coilovers from SolarWorks laid out here. These are the fronts. We got new uh, strut hats for the fronts. These are the rears, fully adjustable uh, with the height for our coilovers. Paul's dirt nasty, so I think we're gonna slam it on the ground. I also think we're going to have to temporarily, anyway, reuse our bushings for the rears because I don't think we got bushings I'm an idiot. for the rears. I'm an idiot, so I got front ones, but rear ones because I'm dumb. Also, note about these coilovers. These are swap coilovers, so SolarWorks makes spring rates for VRs in the front of older cars, Mark 1s and Mark 2s, uh, to allow you to actually put them in and have the correct spring rate so you don't have a really bad sag problem in the front of your car. So we'll link to all, that, all the swap coilovers in the description where you can check those out. What's cool about these coilovers is they're kind of a budget coilover at around $500 or so, but this is the same kind of technology that goes into the really high-end KW. Now, you don't have adjustable damping and things like that, but for just a base affordable coilover, these are probably among the best. Yeah, so if you spin them all the way down, I mean, we're gonna slam the car on the ground. It's gonna be basically undrivable. Start them a little low, like lower than I'm gonna have the car, and then once they're in the car and bolted up, I'll, sp I'll spin the collars up. This one sets the height, and then this one locks the height setting one. We can slam it on the ground. We got a 10 hour drive home. 
And the uh, shock was already low. <laughs> so for the rear shock absorbers, which we're obviously replacing with coilovers, the mounts are actually in the trunk. And these are cool because you can access them. The seat sits about here. There's a shelf and then there's a little, little cover, this little guy that you have to pop off. And we'll just zip the nut off and then drop the assembly down through the bottom. Hey man, I wanted that. Here you go. <laughs> because this engine bay is gonna look pretty decent after this, we didn't want this to look like a complete disgusting disaster. This is not really the ideal way to paint a brake booster, but this is the life we're living. So the rear bumper and the front bumper on this car is old. The black bumper, which was nice and shiny at one time, is now dull and gray. And there's a quick, easy way to turn them black. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you guys wanna check it out, go to my YouTube channel, In the Fast Lane with Jamie. I'll have a whole video just on that. Hey, so uh, we gotta get this old Cresto shifter. Look at this thing. We gotta get this out, and I also have to cut the sound insulation out a little bit. I think I might actually have to cut the carpet too, so that we can mount the O2J shift shifter box in. So that'll change it from this like stick thing to uh, to cable cable shift, and it'll be way better. And we might actually find a gear on the way home. We had some exposed metal that we wanted to clean up and and uh, get take care of. So yeah, we taped it off, painted it real quick, improved the aesthetic dramatically. It's going to be gorgeous. When you're on a tight timeline painting a bunch of things and spending a lot of time doing that is real dumb. Because I make terrible life choices, I did that. So I'm trying to figure out if we're just rusted or if or if we have the wrong size. This is that's a good question. When you have old cars that are all rusted, it's like is it the wrong size socket or is it just rusted? It's a game. It's a, it's a game we like to play when we're working on old cars. I need a flathead pry bar screwdriver. Okay. <laughs> what have you been doing? Um, pretty much just wa wandering around and handing the guys tools in need. <laughs> no, you did that Walking back around. bumper that looks amazing. I did, I did do the back bumper. I still got to do the front bumper, which we'll do here soon. Even if the guys aren't drivable, at least the car It'll bumpers look will look amazing. It'll look good sitting outside your shop when we leave it here. <laughs> For some reason, they're standard, so I had to get a 7 16 This nut is rounded off. So Paul, did you round these bolts off? It wasn't me. It, it wasn't me. Okay, so Charles is about to drop this radiator in. This is a really important moment because if you don't do this properly and you don't do this before putting the engine, you'll have some problems with getting the engine in. You won't be able to. All right, so Paul's got, this is actually the factory Scirocco radiator that sits in the car this way and it sits on these pins. Now, what that does is that puts our radiator inlet and outlet on the passenger side. And on the VR, it actually needs to be on the driver's side. So what we're probably gonna end up doing is mounting it this way and maybe just putting some foam down on the bottom or something so it's not vibrating and rubbing on the uh, this front support brace here. But as you can see, this is a tiny radiator. I would actually like to see a radiator with about another six inches of with, cooling surface yeah. so that um, we can get them to fit. They're gonna overhang the tanks a little bit. I think that's okay. This is not the best best situation, but between putting the foam down on the bottom and those little uh, covers on the dowels on what is now the top, we're, we're in there snug. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of felt right here to prevent it rubbing and like doing that. And I think we're gonna be good. The bracket I'm talking about adding is bolting here and here, right? Just a small 90 degree with a long end going to this factory fan shroud mounting location. Part of doing this kind of thing is making exceptions uh, where you have to make exceptions. So this one, I think, is one of those places. Uh, I might be able to get it. Hey, Paul, are you okay? I'm not well. What's wrong? Well, I think because of all the painting I've been doing, uh, I have a massive headache. There's like a ton of room. And I feel like duty. So taking a, a small break. I'm going to just be very honest about this. I don't like how much these overlap, one. And two, I don't like how these mount for a couple of reasons. One, there's no shroud, uh, which would cover up some of this open parts of the radiator and force air through where the fan is. So the way these work is this piece right here actually punches through the fins of the radiator. And then there is a little lock here that clips it on and kind of locks it like a zip tie would. It works, I just don't love the idea of 
poking through the fins of the radiator. It decreases coolant efficiency a little bit. Let's just hope we don't get stuck in any mad traffic on the way. <laughs> when you're moving, you're good. It's when you stop. If you watched our previous episode when we rebuilt the engine, we pumped up the oil pressure. We also pumped up the jam. But pump it up. Uh, <laughs> So what we want to do before we actually start the engine is get a mechanical gauge on it, verify that the oil pressure is good before we actually start it and potentially have it running and damage the bearing. So we'll have this thing with probably with no fuel hooked up to it yet, crank, crank it over and check the oil pressure like that mechanically. So we didn't do any of that stuff <laughs> at all. Because of the later problems we had that distracted us pretty heavily. Absolutely. But that is the right way. You should always have a new engine tested beforehand. Yep. Pressure gauge on first startup. So do as we say, not as we do, maybe? Yeah, like my, like my dad used to say, <laughs> hypocrite. <laughs> this build is probably too many details for us to actually go over every minute detail. Obviously, this is not a DIY. But you are gonna get every- This is a don't I yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, You are gonna get everything that you would need to do for a swap as far as information and insights probably. We're, we're definitely gonna try to hit on the key, uh, most important things. But there's gonna be a ton, probably hundreds, maybe even- Billions at least. Of things- How many billions? That we're gonna deal with along the way uh, that, that we're not gonna talk about. A big thing that he spent time doing while I was over here sitting on my- um, was, <laughs> While Paul died, yeah. uh, this is what I did. Uh, I was feeling not well, but fun fact, uh, Corona masks are better for probably more than just coronavirus. You also can use it to cover your face while you paint stuff uh, because that I probably wouldn't have felt like garbage for, for an hour and a half. They went through all the stuff for running it through the firewall and figuring out where we're gonna, what we need to run where and what we're placing in the car. So. Uh, that's something that they didn't show you and uh, it takes a long time to figure out what plug goes where and where it needs to be. Are you ready to fumble? All right. Yeah. It's, it's right. tight. I don't know if it's gonna go in this way. It's tight. I think we might have to do what Jamie's original idea was, which was just, yeah, try to <laughs> drop it in the top. Dropping it from the top, make it drop right into this spot. I'm yeah, but the up. engine mount's there too, right? Right, it's, but if you look, the, you can't, we can't drop it straight down. So what we're running into, and this- The hole is too small. <laughs> this is part of how this kind of stuff goes. In, rather than getting the engine hanging or the car on top of it, this is why we wanted to roll it into place where it's at now so that we can evaluate, is this the proper way to do it? Or does it make more sense to get the engine way up and then take it, you know, if, if the engine were sitting like this, drop one side way down and slip it in and then level it out and bolt it up. So this is kind of what we're looking at now. This was the point of this exercise. Slip it in. Yeah. <laughs> apparently Flip I it say, around, level it out. According to TikTok, I say a lot of dirty things uh, accidentally and then I'm disappointed in myself for not hearing them. So we, talked about a number of ways to get the engine installed and depending on how much of your engine is put together, the kind of vehicle you have, there's probably 10 other ways that this engine could have went in the car. We are no swap experts. We don't do these all day long. So there might be a variety of ways that are better. I've heard of people who said they were able to drop it to the bottom. I've heard of people who do it with the trans off and then swing it up in. I've heard of coming some of these ways. What you're about to see is what we did. I bought it for the Lotus because it's a mid-engine car and you can't use a cherry picker because the arm is just, like you can get it on the engine but you can't get it high enough to get it out of the car. So you bought this just for that one car? I, I literally bought this for that one car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was either that or we couldn't work on it. This is what like Pull Apart has yeah. when you go to the junkyard and you need to snatch an engine out. You, you, they're not, uh, they're usually manual though, This they? is 150 billion times nicer though. All right, nice job guys. Very nice. We are ready to put the engine in. We have this very awesome contraption that Jamie has at his shop, which is gonna make this a little bit easier. We are gonna try to swing this thing in. So you see Charles has a really long chain. Here are two other chains over here. We have to take this Two chains! Uh, and uh, yeah. away we go. Hey, you know what else is gonna happen? What's that? Um, everyone in the comments is gonna say that we're cheating because this is 
Such a nice rig. I mean, we are cheating. You're not <laughs> cheating, you're not trying. That's exactly right. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Right. Boom. Okay. I'll uh, not do it uh, so fast. Just watch it. So it's up, down, and then like an emergency stop. That's it. Okay. I'll just keep tapping and you guys tell me if you need to stop. How's it, how are we looking up front? Uh, so far, so good. Okay. 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 Keep going. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come this way more, and then we're actually gonna have to go up on my side. Right. Charles got, uh, or actually, uh, we got the mount in. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a combination deal. Uh, we got that mount in on that side. Uh, the issue we now have is the oil pan here. So if you look, here's our oil pan of our engine. It needs to go down. The issue with that is you can see this bracket is where the engine mount, this guy, needs to actually go. So. If we drop it straight down, it's just gonna slam down on top of this frame rail and um, but, I mean, it'll mess it up, but and nothing else, the engine's not gonna go in. So we have to get a little more creative. We're probably gonna have to drop this thing down further in to get it past where it's actually in right now and then, and then pull it up together. How are you clearance wise, Paul? Uh, I'm not good. Okay. Maybe this is what they, they were talking about when we heard that Scirocco's have a lot less clearance. So we, ha we have to get creative because we have some challenges of getting cleared in there. Charles may have a solution he's working on currently. I've heard him toiling over. If not, we're gonna bring in this thing to jack up the other side of the engine. We're gonna have two engine hoists. Ideally, we, in this circumstance, we take the, the booster or the master cylinder off to give us the clearance we need to drop it in. But the issue we have is because this car is really old, we're very concerned about any of the bleeders that you have to bleed the brakes to actually uh, take that master cylinder off. We are afraid that if we try to crack them loose, they're gonna they're gonna break off and then it's never ever gonna work again. And then we're gonna be stranded here because we can't bleed our brakes and then we're gonna end up replacing all kinds of brake lines and all kinds of stuff. So to avoid that, we don't wanna take, not only do we not want to, we almost can't take out the brake master cylinder because if we do, we might end up in a really bad pickle. Uh, okay, so Charles taking off the throttle body. We think if we take off the throttle body and the combi valve right down there, uh, the combination valve for secondary air, that we will actually be able to clear this other stuff without any problem. So this is a much better option than the janky sh we were about to do, um, <laughs> which was to jack up this side of the engine even higher using a secondary, uh, a secondary cherry picker. So it would be inverted. We would put it in inverted. upside down. Tom Cruise. Yeah, like like uh, like the Ice Man. People are watching at home and like, wow, what a group of fumbling idiots. <laughs> yeah, this is, what, this is what working on cars looks like, people. Loop drops in, perfect, no yeah. problems, that never happens. Especially so. when you're modifying cars like this. Yeah. Look at where we're at though. We can clear this. That might work. Dude, we're tight everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So, right. just, are we ready? Just, yeah, like, little boops. One boop. Just little boop. Okay. All right, boop again. So far, so good. All right, boop again. So we're getting, we're right. good right now. I actually have more room now. Go ahead. Okay. All right, Ooh. now we're getting very close to this sensor. Okay. Um, what if I do this? Not really. No, that's not nope. good. Nope. That's worse. <laughs> yeah. One thing we had to do in this circumstance because the tolerances were so tight is <laughs> one of the sensors on the brake master cylinder, we actually had to bend the pins yep. 90 degrees sideways because that's how much space, just the, the, the length of a, an electrical yeah. terminal pin, Half which is a centimeter. Yeah, that's what we needed to actually get to get the engine and trans all the way in. Luckily, we were able to bend that back, no problem. Yeah, and, no issues. And it worked fine. And had the car not been rusted, we could have just taken it off, and it would have been fine too. So true. Perfect. So let's give it another gentle boop. All right. Okay. Beautiful. We can come back now. I am like very. We're on. I'm on. Um, you ready? Yep. Yep. Keep going. This right. front is this not This manifold problem. looks this like a serious problem. This okay, can we push it? Can we rotate the engine back? Uh, you right. can probably pivot this way, but you okay. can't. Okay, we... One more, one more, one more. So, Stop something's or hanging or up, something's hanging up. Right there. Oh, I see that. You're, oh, dude, wait, millimeters away from yes. success. Okay. okay, that's fine. All right, there we go. Okay. Okay. We're in. That freed up a ton of room right. on my side. All right, if we push towards you a little more. Don't push towards me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going then. Okay. Oh, that's it. There we go. That I like that. Good. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good. Oh, Some, okay. Something's hanging up about. over here. That happened. He's got a pry bar at. Do you, how much room do you have to come towards you, Jamie? Um, half inch. 
All right, ready? Yep. yep. Okay. I think we are at the point where we can drop down, lower this down, like tilt it down. You're right. And get this yeah, mount in. I agree. Okay, now we're getting to the point where I'm, I'm on the bottom up. of the master cylinder. We so should if we be. Can, if we can bring the car can, up. More, we can go. Yeah, we can go straight up now. Yeah. That's fine. And we can come ready? towards. Give it a, there we go. You want to pry? Yep. On. Go ahead and pry if you can. I think what needs to happen, Paul, is your side needs to get in. Yeah. I would so say that we, we get can. The in and yes. Then pivot it and up. then we can okay, lower so you, the car. So to, then, then we got to keep going up then. Okay. So when they say Shirakos are a little tight, they're, they're a little tight. But we're trying to get it finally seated and try not to break anything uh, in the process. So I'm holding on to ensure that the we don't break the radiator right now. <laughs> I'm trying to see if that's actually <laughs> anything that's happening. <laughs> I think you actually were. Okay, stop, stop. We need to come that way next. Wait, go wait. Oh yeah, you're you're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, and okay. you're perfect, Jamie. You're perfect. Uh, double floor jacks. All right. This is really kind of sketchy. Yeah, we're, we're just lifting the car. the car. I mean, no, that's that's a very <laughs> that's a very worrying thing. <laughs> here, here. So Nathan's battery died, um, and we are literally just a few wiggles away from getting this in place. This hole right here is just about close to lined up. And then on uh, the other side, we have a punch sitting in there to hold it in place. We should, so we're gonna go this bolt, yeah, then, then that take bolt. the bolt. Yeah. Oh. That's coming up, uh, that's coming up. Stop. It, this should be really close. Uh, All right. We're in halfway. Um, My friends, I need a washer. I need a washer for this bolt. Don't uh, move. <laughs> <laughs> we are in. have one bolt in. That went in real nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. See that, guys? I'm treaded. Nice. He's a cake. I'm treaded. <laughs> He's, right. He's a cake. Jack it up so you can get that tension off the punch. You should see that okay. punch loosen up. Keep going. I mean, if I'm fine with going this way, I care I, zero. It's close. Can you okay. get in? Yeah, boy. There we go. We're in. How about that? Piece of cake. Okay. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Hey. Hey. Well, the bolt's in. Food. Yeah, somebody brought you food, Charles. Get up. I love food, thank you. Yes. Oh, I'd, I'd like to say the hard part's over, but I actually don't know. Yeah, but well, you know what? We solved it. Good job, Come boys. On, guys. Good job. Nice. Ta da! <laughs> yeah, we're, we are in, at least with the left and right mount. So there, if it is held up by its own power or by its own mounts, we had to remove a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're gonna put that stuff back in now and then sort everything out to find out what our next roadblock is. Yes, I'm, I, my goal is to start this tonight, even if it's just to make sure it runs. So for this job, you need to have a custom downpipe. This allows us to use a Mark One exhaust setup, but install it into this car. So this goes in and we're still got the, the other one on and then it's just gonna go in place like so. This hanger right here allows us to use the factory hanger right here. And I actually asked uh, Tectonics to include a flange uh, that would bolt to this one so that we can potentially weld a reducer in to connect to the factory exhaust. That's, that's at least the goal. If not, I also ordered a turn down uh, so that we can just kick it right out at the bottom and we can be turned down for what. In addition, we have this mount right here, which Charles installed this bracket that we had to take off uh, to get this thing in place. And this, this is our rear mount. So goes to the body here and then has this little hockey puck style guy in the center. So here we have our hole for where our shifter came down. The, obviously the old system had a rod that ran through, but we're swapping to the cable style like this, which, which is from an O2J trans. This, is, this actually came out of a Beetle. Uh, and so we need to mount this in here. Now there are no holes for the, these two studs that come through the floor and then this rear bolts that actually mount up here. Charles is actually working on drilling these holes. The biggest issue you have with this is once you drill the holes, you, the hole is not big enough, so you have to cut that, which obviously you have to worry about making sure you don't set the car on fire inside with the, all the carpeting and stuff. But then the other part is, is that the back of this, as you can see, these studs are on top, but then the holes back here are much lower. So to make this sit flush, you actually have to put spacers in between here at the back Otherwise, the whole shifter will be cocked 
forward once you mount it up. So you gotta kind of make it sit more flat like that. Uh, we're gonna have to figure out a solution for the, for the rear of this as well. Smells worse in here than it did before. <laughs> so right here is the front mount. So we have the cross brace that we installed and then to get this installed, we had, uh, we had to use a ratchet strap because of some of the clearance issues, which you can take a look at where we have our ratchet strap here. We're hooked on here. We have the engine uh, pulled back for, to the lift. You can see how tight that is. And this gives us the clearance. We need to get this all bolted up. Okay, I got the holes drilled so I can get the studs up through the body of the car here. I did some initial test fitting and I'm actually gonna have to cut this opening front to back a little bit bigger to accommodate the shifter. Now, this is an area where one, it's three layers of metal, so it's actually a pretty intense cut. And two, you do not want to mess this up. This is the body of the car, so I took extra care to measure once and I'll cut seven or eight times. Wait, that's not right. Cut twice, measure none. How does it go? I don't know, I just cut until it's not working. <laughs> cut until it goes all the way up through. <laughs> or measure twice and cut once. He's got spark flying, he's got carpet in the car, we've got this ready to go, and we got some, so we have some fuel lines in the car that were leaking earlier, they're capped off. There's probably still some fuel vapors, and we'll wanna better be safe than sorry. I am cutting from inside the car. This could be sketchy. Maybe sketchy. You know, you know what you can't file? What? This huge, this huge lip here. Oh, I can cut this though. Okay, so we got the shifter mounted up. Do you know it's in gear? Meaning that there's like some sort of oh. locking or does it like, I don't know if this is in gear. <laughs> I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with the first one. That this is first, this is second, this is third, instead of just hoping and praying you're in third gear. We're gonna be banging gears like crazy. Get to a place where we can at least start the car. Yeah. Make sure it runs, verify the engine is gonna run and yep. then uh, and, then, and then we can continue with doing everything else. All right, so we've tackled a bunch of things already. Our next like big moment install is getting our clutch cable through the firewall. Now, what I think we're gonna end up having to do is way back here, we have this sleeve. This is the pass through where the factory clutch cable goes through. Now we need to kind of follow this same orientation because it's gonna go right to the top of the clutch pedal. But if you'll notice, there's like this retainer and then this sleeve that's sticking out. I'm pretty sure we gotta get rid of that sleeve. Not a problem without a brake booster. Much more challenging with the brake booster. So I'll probably end up just cutting this clip, getting it out of the way, getting the grommet around the outside out of the way, and then just trying to rock the sleeve back and forth to break what I assume is just a spot weld. Uh, and hopefully it comes out easy enough. It's, it's not so much that this is hard, it's just working in a tight hole down here uh, presents a, a pretty significant challenge. So I'm gonna be bent over working in this hole. <laughs> Check out him and have that tight, tight hole. <laughs> This right now, I am. Hey Charles, what? if this has a two wire, that's a, that's just a sending unit, right? That's that's what it's got to be. Okay, all right. Me, I'm verifying that we only have one fuel pump. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I loved it. Now I can put this back together, and I don't have to stick my hands inside of a gas tank. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Despite the fact that this looks absolutely horrible, uh, I was actually able to kind of cut it enough to where I could get a pair of pliers on it and break the weld on the backside. So we don't need this. We can pass through where this was with this part right here. This is butyl cord. Uh, is, is technically what it's called, and it's kind of the super weird, tacky, uh, sticky stuff. It's used a lot of times to seal things like pollen filter housings and stuff okay. like that. The so B5, five and a half Passats had a recall where we used this. So it was a P9 recall. I refer to this as P9 or Dum Dum because it's also used to fix broken things sometimes that a Dum Dum would break. Okay, so this is our wiring harness, or at least half of it for this car. Since this is such a big undertaking and we are absolutely on a time crunch, 
you can try to do all the wiring on the on a, this car yourself for time's sake uh, and for uh, a lot of people may not have the expertise or even the interest in actually doing all this wiring there's uh, our buddy at a tdc shop which uh dave is there he's been huge help for us information wise in terms of stuff that we needed um to get for all this harness stuff uh but we also obviously he supplied this harness for us and to me for what he charges for these things it's not cheap but for most people this is going to be by far your best option he's going to give you a turnkey solution we did one that he calls like a race solution which basically just has like a toggle whoa. switch Dude, oh, whoa are we a race car now we are a race car so he does like a, this vroom, vroom, some fighter jet stuff so uh this is so that we don't have to worry about wiring into our dash because sometimes old cars the wiring gets super questionable and and uh it may not be reliable so this will allow us to know for sure the car is going to start uh and all of the other stuff he labels so that you know exactly where it goes so this is pretty much turnkey this plugs into the ecm uh, uh, they apparently they don't they don't know we're shooting a video right now <laughs> apparently both of the other people we're making this video with have forgot that they're like you know what like you know what let's see how loud we can get <laughs> and try to make sure that if other people are trying to talk about information in front of a camera that they have no chance they could possibly do that <laughs> and then just keep going on and 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 are you stuck the so the, what I was saying is that everybody was talking and then just keep going on and on and on because nobody was shutting the f up while I, we were I trying. was in the car. I I, I'm aware. I got the clutch cable in. I know. And it's hooked up to the pedal. It's in? <laughs> I need to adjust it because it's a little floppity. But, uh, well, yeah. Okay. You're good. <laughs> Charles? Because basically all you're going to do with the harness he gives you is plug it into all the places it belongs and then run it. So uh, the only thing we're not going to be using is this is some of the information for the instrument cluster, which for the time being, when we're, we're going to be kind of gangster because we don't have enough time to make this thing perfect. I guess plug and play as plug and play as it can be for this job. So most people are terrified for about wiring and uh, probably for good reason if you don't really understand how to diagnose wiring problems and this solution makes it super easy so make sure you check out dave uh he's an awesome dude and uh yeah tdc shop we'll link to it in the description uh right now i am here <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night or whatever time it is we're, we're here ruining jamie's life now yeah jamie's like man why did i agree to do yeah, this, this like i mean what else would i be doing i'd be like sleeping in a warm bed <laughs> 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 having lovely dreams <laughs> with my family seems pretty obvious to me <laughs> so part of this harness has the the drive by wire pedal plug uh which to make it as easy as possible so that needs to run inside the car but this is a pedal bracket from Eurowise, and then we have our gas pedal so that goes on here and then you plug that in to here and then we just mount it in and we should have drive by wire once we run everything through the firewall no throttle cable Okay, so we're under our dashboard here. We're gonna look at installing our pedal bracket, which goes, uh, obviously, the original accelerator pedal has already been removed. Here is our drive-by-wire one. Uh, that's not very good lighting. And this bracket has to be mounted. Now, to do so, I have to do a little bit of trimming of some original, like, uh, batting and stuff like that, and then we should be able to mount this, hopefully. It's possibly different because it's Scirocco. We're not sure. I'm about to find out. Over the course of the next hour or so, we got the minimum stuff put together required for us to start the car. Nothing pretty, just everything kind of tucked out of the way, so no damage caused. Mm -hmm. But just, we needed to get this car started right then and there. First, we're going to crank it to get as much oil pressure through everything that we can. Here we go, negative battery terminal. We got power. Nothing has set fire yet, so that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, no smoke. Oh, that's satisfying. Oh, okay. Nothing in the belts, right? We're clear? Okay, ready? Yeah. Uh -oh. Something's not hooked up properly. All right, let's uh, shut the ignition off, take the battery off. We were hitting the button, nothing was going on because there was no ground from the starter. The starter is grounded through the engine, so the engine ground needs to be connected. So literally we had no ground, so that's important. So 
for now, <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> we're just gonna use a jumper cable, so we're going right from the ground post of the battery to the block. So now we have a good ground, Hopefully it'll start. What he's saying is I'm stupid and I didn't connect the ground. I'm not saying you're stupid. I mean, he said it in a much nicer way, but that's the truth. <laughs> uh, part two. Part two. Part Key two. on. We're gonna crunk it. One, a two, three. Oh. Well, okay. Let's that's, get the battery that's not tight enough. Uh, I oh, I, I see, I see smoke. smoke. Yeah, that's from the that's from the starter. All right, let's. That, uh, that, that must not be tight enough. We got too much resistance. Round three. Round three, uh, we've properly tightened the starter cable. Key on, crunking it in three, two, one. The engine turned or, or this engine was built so yeah, poorly, nice. by so poorly that it won't turn over because it's too bound up, which well, we know isn't true because we turned it over by hand and we would have known if it was. All right, we're at 20 amps, we should be good enough. Round four, four three, two, one. Once the car wouldn't start, we tried to eliminate every possible thing. It could be painful and it was brutal. So here are all the starts we attempted while trying to get this engine started. All right, go. Can you grab a jump box? Yeah. This is the woes of, uh, of a project. And then, boop. Round 87. And time five. Three, two, one. Uh -oh, we got, got smoke. I don't like what's going on here. We got some smoke somewhere over yeah, here. Yeah, it's a starter. Round number seven, seven, 777. 1777. <laughs> I mean, I'm fairly easily turning this. Yeah. You see me, I'm barely, yeah, I mean, yeah, this I'm is a long me. ratchet, but, yeah. and that's turning against compression. Maybe we do have a bad starter. Yeah, we got a problem. All right, let's do this. Stop. Yeah. Dude, this feels exactly like a locked up trans. Well, How warm this wire don't... is, is telling me it's we a resistance this? issue. Let's put it in gear, and I'll rotate it around and see if it moves. Okay. No problems at all. Yeah, everything looks good there. So I guess let's test the starter. How do you test a starter, Charles? Well, you're about to find out. That seems slow as shit. For, for not, like, for that, that should torque up. <laughs> Why don't we here, hook the jump box up to this battery, please? That was way more power. Wow. Than that battery. So maybe we got a bad cell. Maybe. It's possible. New battery. Who dis? Who dis? <laughs> <laughs> Something's All right, so bad possibilities. Starter. Normally, dude, when I bench test a starter, that thing goes Yeah. And it throws. Yeah, you it did not do that. It turns very slow, like something is dragging. Almost like we rebuilt the engine uh, poorly, uh, <laughs> but we turn this engine over by hand and it doesn't have resistance, so it's, that's that's not the issue. So we either believe we have a bad starter or maybe we've mixed up, either mixed up something in the wiring, that, that would have been me, or maybe when the harness was built there was a problem, which seems not particularly likely, considering who it came from, or, uh, or a bad starter out of the box, but I bought a new one for this so that also is very unlikely. So we're in a very weird circumstance right now. All right, uh, say a prayer, cross your fingers. Nope, okay. I mean, the likelihood of a new starter being bad. Pretty low. Pretty low, but not it out does of the question. Happen. I have had bad starters out of the box. Yeah, it's not common. This is our, this is for, like if you're working on an engine, you can crank the engine, basically, uh, a switch in between these two wire, a jumper cable that you're- Forcing the car to start? Yeah, you're basically powering ground to the starter and- Dude, I, it's the starter. We've eliminated everything, it's the starter. I, 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 I want to agree with you, <laughs> but I, I feel like it's not, but I mean- I mean, what else can it be? I don't have an answer to that. That's the, that's why I have nothing to say. 
So at the end of the night, I am feeling the lowest I have felt during this project. Defeated, for sure. Completely ruined. We went through a lot of diagnostic process to eliminate everything we possibly could on the car. Uh, the starter was what we landed on in the end, and yeah. we don't generally like to assume new parts are bad. And so, both well, things we eliminated, mechanical uh, drag, which would have been yep. from the engine. We also tested the transmission to make sure that wasn't mechanically dragging. We jumped in wiring. with some wiring. So we replaced all the factory wiring with jumper cables, because if that doesn't get it done, nothing will. A vehicle battery. Tomorrow, we have a starter that we're gonna get for the car, and hopefully, our diagnostic is correct and it needs a starter. How hopeful are you feeling right now? Right now, I was feeling, uh, I would say probably 50-50. I could flip yeah. a coin probably at this point and like maybe we f***ed up in some other way and maybe, maybe it needs a starter. <laughs> you were a little more optimistic than I was. I wasn't feeling good about it at all. Yeah, I didn't like it. A big thank you to all the brands involved with this build. Most importantly, us, shopdap.com, Elite Motorworks. Dave over at TDC Shop was instrumental in getting us all the stuff we needed for this build. Eurowise for their engine swap parts, Solarworks coilovers, Unitrack for the ECU tune, and BFI for the clutch parts.